Let's talk about the formers a bit. So they can be found here in this modeling menu right here in the top. And even though that there is a lot of options here, there's only a couple of them that are interesting to us when we talk about 3D modeling workflows. So we're going to talk about lattice wrap, shrink wrap, and nonlinear deformers. So for now, we're going to stick just to basic explanation of what the formers are, uh, why do we use them and where are they useful and simply just general operation connected to the deformers in general. And then later we're going to talk about lattice wrap, shrink wrap in a specific videos just for them because they do deserve a specific topic. So let's just now focus on nonlinear deformers and just in general what they do and why do we use them. So let's take an example again. We just use a simple, simple object. So let's say we have this is just a simple object. It's very low poly, meaning that it has the minimum number of polygons in order, let's say, for this geometry to work. And when you have low poly geometry, then it's really easy to manipulate that geometry in any shape you want. So, for example, if I want to have a twisted geometry like that, I can just twist it fairly easily by moving like uh, this upper side, upper polygon actually rotating upper polygon and then I can just later easily add let's say multiple cuts with multi cut again I'm just middle mouse clicking to creating cuts in the middle and then I have interesting let's say shape like that but what happens is if for example we have an object that it's something like this and let's call it that it's almost done and that we like uh, how this object turned out to be. But the problem is that it has a lot of subdivisions, meaning that what if I want to now twist this object in the same fashion that I did the one with the low poly, I could select this on top. And if I now twist, you will see that this, poly, this edge would prevent that and this edge as well and every other meaning now that there has to be a way for us to still do that twist. We can also, let's say, do a soft selection here, right? in our soft selection or simply hit B key on your keyboard and then you would select polygons and then you would, let's say, twist parts that you want. So, for example, we want to twist the upper area and then we would twist it like this. But again, this is not something we would want. So again, we would need to adjust this maybe, and maybe would we get something close to what we want. But soft selection in this case will not work for us. So in this case, what we would do is we would use the former to twist this geometry for us. And also the former cool thing about them is that they actually work better when you have larger polygon count, meaning if it would be like our starting uh, polygon count, it would not work as good as now when we have larger count. So let's go to the form while our object is selected and let's go to nonlinear and let's select twist. There's also a checkbox here, but the settings here are fairly minimal and we are going to use them as a default and we'll just hit apply and hit close. And basically what you notice is that now we have this little circle on top on the bottom. And if you go to outline, you will see that now we have this twist one handle before. Let me just undo. We had only the object. And when you go to the form nonlinear twist, you will get this little handle. And this little handle will actually give you some cool uh, options to manipulate later on. So. Let me just also cover the channel box. Your inputs twist is right here, so you can play with the values here. Or if you go to attributes editor, twist is going to be here, so you can also play with the values here to achieve that same twisting effect. There's also a twist handle shape, so in case you do not see this handle, so in case you see it here, but not in the viewport, make sure that you enable it right here in the handle shape. All right, so let's now take a look in the formers in general, because all of them have more or less the same settings in the way how you access them and how you manipulate them. So you will always have this little sliders, but in case you want to have a bit more intuitive approach, you can also hit T hotkey on your keyboard 
and then you will get this little manipulators. Uh, in case the T hotkey is not working for you, you can also find it on modify, transformation tools, and then show manipulator tool. You'll see that I have it hotkey eight. You can also save that as settings preferences, also Windows, setting preferences, hotkey editor, because it is very useful. So you just need to type in show and you will find it here, show manipulator tool and just set your own hotkey in case the default hotkey is not there. All right, so now when you have that activated, the only thing you need to do is just play with the handles like so. You can play with it uh, like uh, so, or you can also choose the direction up and down in which you want to take this. So it can be very, very useful. All right, so now that we covered how to access uh, the formers and what they do, let's talk about some other functions or other features. So what you can do extra, so let me just actually delete the handle and let's introduce maybe one more deformer here and let's try something else. So let's go to the form nonlinear and let's go to let's say flare. So flare what we'll do is again just you need to play around and to see actually what it does and we'll just do the, here the same. We're just gonna play around with it a bit and try to deform this shape in a specific way and maybe this will work and let's say maybe this will work. All right, so let's say that this is the shape that we want to have. So what we can do now is we can also stack the formers on top of each other. So if you would like to twist this, we still can. And if you would like to, let's say, bend this in a specific way, so we can bend it in this direction or any other direction, we can do that as well. So if I now come here again to the deform and we come here to nonlinear and I simply apply bend, and again, you will see that now the handles will become available. So I can also bend this. And also what I can do is I can also rotate this if I'm not satisfied with the axes where this is lying. So if I want to change the bend value, I can also change it. So then it bends in this other direction. So let me just again, select the handles and then maybe we have something like that. But I think I'll just leave it as a default because I think this maybe it works just fine. So this now simply means that we can also stack the formers on top of one another. There's also things. So for example, if you change your mind, and for some reason, you want to experiment with the, the hierarchy, what you can do is also you can go to uh, select the object first, go to this little history icon, go to all inputs, and then you will have a list of input operation for this cube. And what it simply means is that you can rearrange your deformers in which direction. So you have uh, your cube, we have our tweak, which was tweak was when we added all the subdivisions. So if you remember, we used multicut, we had subdivisions, then we added our first nonlinear deformer, which is flare, and then we added our bend. You can add bend first, you simply need to hold middle mouse and drag it below the flare. And then this would be the result. And then basically the flare would be the former that comes after bend. So in case you would want to do that, there is an option for that as well. All right, so I'm just going to go a couple of steps back. Okay, so uh, you can also stack not just the formers, but you can also stack, uh, let's say, objects, meaning that if you would like to use one deformer for multiple objects, you can do that as well. Meaning that if I want to, let's say, add um, a sphere, and let's just increase the radius, I can actually include the sphere in this deformer. And to do that, we simply need to go to uh, Windows Relationship Editor, the former set, and under the former set, we'll only have one set, which is flare set. And now the only thing we need to do is just click on the sphere to include it in the former, and there we are. So now the sphere will be included in this deformer too, just in case you want to do something like that. That uh, you know that there's an option for that as well. Okay, a couple of steps back and actually I can delete this. 
Okay, so also when we talk about, uh, let's say, the formers and what do they affect, there's also one other thing that you can do to play around with uh, some settings, let's say. Uh, if, for example, you do not want this to be fully affected, there's just one other option, so you can play with the handle. But in case you want to have a bit more control here, you can also paint weight. So meaning that if you're in object mode, you can go to paint, nonlinear, non flare one weight. And whatever is currently white, that just means it's fully affected by this deformer. And what this will allow you is paint gray to black areas, which means that black will be totally not affected by the former at all. And you can then make a cool transition if, if you want to make, let's say, damage or something like that. So the way to access this paint, I will now just simply remove uh, for now outliner and I will just double click here to get this tool settings. And then what we can do is I'll just reset the tool again so that we all have the same settings. Uh, you have your radius, you have your opacity, you have the profile, you can play with that. Uh, then you have paint operations which are replace, add, scale and smooth. So replace it's a bit aggressive. So if I now add, let's say, larger areas and basically value one is like 100 uh, 100 percent white. If you go to 0 0.5, it will be gray and then you can play with those values. So if I now start to push, you will see that whatever is gray, I'm slowly affecting here this geometry. So replace can be a bit aggressive. Scale could be a work a bit more, uh, let's say, easier to manipulate, something like that. Let's now paint. So whatever it's becoming gray. it's going to be less affected. So right now it's 0 0.7, maybe you can make it 0 0.8 to make it a bit more smoother. So something like that. And all oh, right, there we go. So, uh, and the same thing goes for smooth. It's just gonna smooth it out. And also you can flood it. And if you flood it, then it's just gonna smooth it all out. And yeah, there we are. So once you're done, you just simply hit Q to confirm to exit the operation and yeah, just another neat feature if you're willing to play with that. And let's say that now you're satisfied with how your object uh, appears and how, you, how it deforms and you just want to continue editing it in the state that is shown as a deformer. Basically what we need to do now is just delete the history because if you remove the handle, it's going to go back in its own state but if you go to edit, delete all by type, history, then you can now continue editing the object as this is the original shape. So basically this is just a short introduction in how the formers work. We can take a look in one more deformer, which is really cool. And it's going to be, I think, most used ones in terms of 3D modeling workflow because it does help a lot uh, when we talk about, let's say, reshaping or if we, let's say, worked on a helmet and for some reason we added a lot of subdivisions and we kind of lost track over the proportions, we can still uh, reproportion that, let's say, helmet into something that still fits even though we have a lot large number of subdivisions like let's say right here. So in order to access lattice, we need to go to deform lattice and let's just go ahead and reset all the tools, all the settings. We're going to cover this in a special uh, separate video all in depth, but for now I just want to give you a quick input in what lattice does. So by default, you will get this result. So if I turn the wireframe, you will see that we have our base shape, base object on the bottom and on the top we have our lattice and then we have our base. And if you go into the attribute editor, you can have here lattice shape and then you will have lattice base. And basically if you go to deform lattice, you will here have divisions 
which will be the same as here. And then you will ha have uh, local divisions, which is again, same as here. So what I want to do now is just want to change here this, uh, the shape from uh, five divisions to three, simply because when it comes to uh, rearranging the points, I like to keep them as low number as, po as possible. So here we have uh, white edges are our lattice points, our lattice edges, and grayed out, uh, grayed out edges are actually the edges from our object. So the only thing I need to do is now select the lattice, go to right click and select the lattice points. And now I can select all the points and then I can move them, I can scale them and I can do basically the same transformation as for the object. And now the only thing is, now that this object here is not deforming in a way that we maybe want because we want to have a bit more curved surface that we have a bit more control over that. So we can go to FFD and turn off local or simply increase here the influence. So it's just maybe let's turn local for now. And then what you can do is just play with this points until you maybe reposition this shape. And again, if we uh, see the wireframe, how this looks, we are now able to manipulate uh, even though this shape is very dense, we are able to manipulate it and just set it in maybe proper proportions that we want. So maybe let's say something like this and like that and maybe push it a bit more down here. And yeah, basically that is all that there is for now. So this is just again a short breakdown of uh, what Lattice would do and how you can easily reshape the objects who already have, which already have a large uh, polygon number. All right, let's close this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.